Good day all. I wrap Steen of Glenn and Associates with your agriculture update and this is for Thursday the 9th of January 2020 and we're just after 4 15 p.m. Central Time. Well we've got a pretty mixed bag going on in the grain market. Cotton continues with the big bid as the market is looking forward to next week's deal uh, where we see the U.S. Chinese trade deal and the word that we keep hearing from our sources at Lynn is DGE, something called white lightning which is a uh, it's a byproduct of Milo and it's used in the formation of liquor. And we hear that we're going to be sending a lot of that to China. I'm laughing, but it's, it's what we're hearing. Cotton's in the mix. Wheat, they think, is in the mix. And we're not hearing that much about beans and corn, but we should be. And so we're looking at that. Now, as you know, hogs are probably in the mix. And if you take a look at the hog market, you look at the back end. Let's say you go to June of next year versus the current February. There's almost a 20 to, uh, cent a pound difference on it. So don't think that they're not pricing in that China's going in, but you won't see it in the front months because those aren't the months being impacted. Another event that's been happening is in, uh, I think it's Kansas, Holcomb, uh, Kansas, if I'm right. That's where the Tyson food plant is. And now they're back up to ma the, taking in the cattle, calling them, if you will, and we're getting the beef out there. Now, that was one of those plants that was down for quite a while, so a lot of traders think that's going to help uh, cattle demand in the near term as well. So the event tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m., the U.S. Supply Demand Report for the U.S. We'll get final numbers where we're at. Uh, we'll get world numbers. Then we move into next week where we get the Chinese trade deal that the president's talking about. And, you know, the one thing he said today, can the U.S. farmers supply all the grains and all they're going to be needed? He knows the details. We don't. But I don't know how much is reality and how much is, uh, if you will, the hyperboil that he, that he likes to put into it, the hyperperboles. Okay, so the week area charts, the weekly area chart, you're still st right where you were. You haven't gone anywhere. You're up three cents for the week. You're in a resistance area. Is the market going to get disappointed or is the market going to be happy with first the USDA report on Friday and then next week's data? I can't answer that. What we've also got is a market that, as you can see, has not taken out these current lows. Now, that's important. If they're taken out, this chart's going to suddenly look rather heavy. In other words, look as though the market's got a high and then a reversal high under these lows. So I can visually see what I don't want to happen. I can look at it on the chart and say we've got a pattern where we've had higher lows because while this is 937 and three quarters, this break low is 37 and a half and the market did extend up. In fact, today it had the highest high it's had and then it is expected, and I'm at least expecting it, the market evening up in front of Monday, uh, in front of Friday's report at 11 o'clock. Market will be open in the morning before then, so there'll be probably some more evening up. You pulled back again to the 18-day average of closes, and so often I say that's your line in the sand. And the market's trying to figure out from that zone what to do next, and we'll see. Right now the trend is up and the bias is up. Should the market get a jump off the USDA report, wherever this upper Bollinger Band comes in, that's where I expect the market to have a difficulty. We'll see if I'm right or wrong, if it's bullish there. If the market doesn't like what it sees and it gets under 937 and three quarters and after the report stays there, well, wherever the 100-day average and the upper Bollinger Band come in, that could be the support levels in the market. As we look at momentum, you have divergence. While prices have been trying to rally, you've had momentum pointing down. The two are not working together right here, nor is this flattened out yet. So momentum dropping, bias up, back to the 18-day average with the swing line up. In the meal market, I've been saying, I think this is the weaker part of the uh, soy complex, and it still has a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Now, today's low was uh, three, let's see, 299.20. I'm wrong on that, 299.20, the Bollinger Band, 299.10. So you can see where the market's finding its support against that first challenge of the lower Bollinger Band. It finished back off those uh, lows that it made, only about a dollar. You could easily hit that tonight because those, that band's going to be very close if the market opens steady. In the soy oil, 
is the market going to make a run for the 18-day average? Now, that average is also going up to the tune. Recently, if we look at this, at about eight, nine points a day. So we should be in the neighborhood when we reopen of 34.45, 34.50, right in that general zone. We'll see if the market can find its way there for support. As long as it doesn't take out 34.44, it keeps the pattern of higher lows. But there is a warning pattern that's already hit. And that pattern's now you got lower highs. So if this market takes that out and closes under 34.40, there's a problem. You can go down to this 33.12 area. Conversely, if you can take out 35.06, you're putting into play the possibility of getting back to the upper Bollinger Band. I hate report days. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know how to trade. We'll take what you think is bearish or bullish and reverse the thinking on it and think something else from it. In the corn market, neutral as can be. You went back today, challenged with the high of 387. You challenged the 18 day average, the 100 day average, and you finished at 383 and a quarter. So I'm getting pretty much what I thought was going to happen, just playing around, evening up, tightening up the Bollinger Bands. Market's going to make you guess and worry what happens with the report. In the wheat market, while it's rallied nicely off of its return to the 18-day average of closes, still not trending. You have a higher high, you have a lower low, you have a market going into the report that if it opens higher tonight, it could be overbought over the 70 level in the slow stochastics, and I have my first resistance at 565. I don't know what to make out of that. In the sugar market, again, where did the market hold? Take a look at your 18-day average of closes, that was your holding point. You held it yesterday. Today, you made a lower low, and with that, you have an outside day up, and where did the market stop? Remember what we talk about here so often? It's not all the time, but it's often that the first challenge of a Bollinger Band offers the resistance point. Well, that number's 1375, just so I can prove my point. Today's high, 1376, and you finish 1371. What is the trend? It's up. Is it overbought? You betcha. So you've got higher lows, higher highs, right into an overbought zone where that's the first objective. In the coffee, as I said to you and we talked about just yesterday, this market's in a free fall. It's got an embedded reading now. It just keeps working its way. It either closes to the right or just slightly to the left of the Bollinger Band. It's not giving you a lot of days in a row one way uh, staying under it, so you're not getting a big bounce. If it wants to accelerate the decline between here and the 100-day average is where I'd look for the support, you can get a bounce for no reason at all at any point in time. But because you have the embedded reading, I think it's going to get sold by the pros on a reasonable bounce that keeps the embedded slow stochastic in place. In the cocoa market, another one of these soft commodities that did what? Came down, now you tell me, here's the 18-day average, 24.93, yesterday's low, 24.97. Today, the 18-day average is 24.95 to below 24.96. It didn't exactly hit it, it missed it by the minimum tick, one tick, and then it took off to the upside. Again, like the sugar market, my problem in this market is you've got layers of resistance. There's even a key moving average that comes in here. I don't show you on this all the moving averages, but there's one there. So between here and the upper Bollinger Band, we'll see if it can do anything. But the bulls grabbed control of this market today, and they held it where they had to hold it. So give them credit for that, but you are overbought with a 75 reading. In the cotton, this is what a classic embedded slow stoch uh, stochastic reading looks like, and this is what often happens. You get the pullbacks while you have that reading. They're well supported on those breaks, and the pros keep trying to drive the market higher. I don't know what to expect going into the USDA report, let alone next week's um, U.S. Tr uh, Chinese trade deal. So we'll see the objective, upper Bollinger Band are close to it. In the cattle market, look at how narrow and sideways this is. I mean, you're basically caught in a $2 trading range that's not moving out one way or the other. This is either a large top or a big base that you're going to move out from. Which way is the question? Going home? the bulls have control. You have higher lows, you have a higher high, you're over the 18-day average, and momentum's up. Now, if you take out 125, 77 and a half, and don't make higher highs than this, you'll have 
lower highs and then a lower low back into the other part. This is not yet provided breakout news to the upside or downside. In the feeder cattle, you keep going to the upper Bollinger Band and trying to push it and you haven't succeeded yet. You got up to it here, you got up to it here, right here, then you fell back to the 18-day average, but it is trying to push out to the upside. It is overbought. The question is, can it move out from here or not? When markets first move out of sideways action, be it upside, they'll often get overbought, downside, oversold. So you always pay attention, are you going sideways? And you are. In the hog market, I, I realize that we all want to believe that nearby hogs are going to get a bid. They're not, okay? This market's looking like it's the back months that get the Chinese play. The front months are just supply, supply, supply that's going to be put away and the idea that we'll be able to ship that supply eventually out to China. But where those purchase prices will hit, the market is, I think, giving you a story. It's not in the nearby hogs. It's in the summertime hogs, and that's the differential in the prices. Now, I put out a lot of special reports. I put out yesterday my metals report. So if you're a gold trader, I really honed in on the gold market. And so far, my analysis from what I put out yesterday is coming to play. You might want to take a look at it. I deal with price counts, seasonal charts, the weekly chart, the daily chart, I give you what I think is the analysis that uh, the longer term is going to hold. And my definition of longer terms, a, a couple of weeks. And that's what futures are about. They're not about you buy now, you're getting out a year from now. I wish it were that way, but the leverage makes it so difficult to play like that because you get typically close to 90% leverage with no interest. I mean, if, if you use leverage in the stock market, it's 50% max. It's a lot more here. That doesn't mean that there aren't ETFs that do a lot of work in the uh, stock market that can have much more uh, leverage, but I'm just giving you the, the play. So if you'd like to look at the report, go to www.irapstein.com under the word research. You'll see the metal report. I fully intend on putting out another report tomorrow. I'm just trying to figure out which one. I'm Irapstein. You have a good day.